So I wanted to do this video based on a question that someone had. How long does it take before a diabetic goes blind or loses the limb? So let's talk about that. And I'm not saying that that's going to happen to you if you're a diabetic, but you should know this data. Okay. Normally, it takes 10 years of exposure to high blood sugar before you see some pretty serious complications to your nervous system, to the eyes, you start developing infections, to the kidney, to the, even, even the brain with loss of memory. So some of the complications are numbness in the fingertips and the toes, uh, definitely infection. You can get infections anywhere because it lowers your immune system. Your kidney starts leaking protein because there's destruction in the kidney. Uh, and then the nerves of the eyes get destroyed. And the way it works is this. So high levels of glucose combine with proteins in your tissue, and they create the situation called glycated proteins, which I'm not going to get into that in this video. It just basically makes the, the protein sticky. It starts clogging up the vascular system, especially to the nervous system. So the nerves in your eye, like the retina, is fed through the vascular system. So if the, if the blood vessels to the nerve um, can't flow blood anymore, the nerves die. And that's what causes the diabetic to go blind. It's called diabetic retinopathy. So there's certain tissues in your body that are influenced with this high sugar more than others. Uh, the eyes are at the top of the list. The nerves are affected. The arteries, the inside of the vascular system is affected. That's why it affects the heart. So when your blood sugars are over 200 or your A1C is over 8, that's the type of exposure that I'm talking about. Normally, a fasting uh, blood glucose is between 70 and 90. A pre-diabetic is anywhere around 100 to 125, and then a diabetic is over 125. All right, guys, so here's the real big problem. You go to your doctor, and the main focus is to keep your blood sugars within normal range, okay, using medication. But my question is, if you're taking the sugar out of the blood, where is it going? Is it just evaporating? Is it disappearing? No. You're basically shoving that sugar into other places in the body. You're creating other problems. So you're switching one problem, lower blood sugar, for another problem. So that sugar now is being crammed into other places. It's going into the liver. It's going around the organs. It's visceral fat. It's going inside the organs, creating damage. And these are some of the problems that are not addressed. The other thing that's not addressed is the high levels of insulin that you have with type 2 diabetes, okay? Uh, type 1 is not enough insulin, but type 2 is a serious problem with insulin resistance where you have high levels of insulin. But the doctor never checks that. They're checking the blood glucose. But here's the other point I want to bring up. High levels of insulin is just as damaging, if not more, than high levels of blood glucose. This is why your body develops insulin resistance because it doesn't want that much uh, insulin in, the, in your body. So it actually creates a situation where the receptors don't absorb it into the cell anymore as a protective mechanism. And it's going to be really hard, if not impossible, to ever correct this problem unless you get the amount of carbohydrates out of your diet. All right, so now the question is, if you already have gangrene or you went blind, can you reverse it? I have no idea. Uh, I guess it's possible, but... Um, I have no idea. It could be too far, but I would definitely try. Um, and what would I do? I would basically go on a healthy keto plan and guess what? Intermittent fasting. I have a link down below to show you how to do it for those of you that are new to this. So really there's two things I want you to focus on. One is getting the carbohydrates out of the diet. Okay. That alone is very therapeutic. So we want to lower the carbs. That's going to lower the risk of all of this right here. And number two, we want to increase the nutrients in your food. Why? Because it's the nutrients in the food that protect against the complications of high sugar. That way you can kill two birds with one stone. And lastly, start eating foods that are nutrient dense to minimize the complications from the high sugar. All right. Thanks for watching. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, 
images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan. Okay. If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.